Hello, and welcome back to yet another Wet Spot unboxing video. We're gonna feature some of the cool things we got in this go around. All right, starting with, let's see who we got first on the docket. Aha, this is yet another new one for us. This is the Blue Mountain Calico Platy. Tremendously long name for such a small fish, but uh, pretty straightforward, just like a lot of platies, like some of the other ones we featured. I do find this one particularly attractive. Platies in the wild, Zephophorus maculatus, would be found throughout Central America, from Mexico to Belize. Uh, in the aquarium, these guys are going to be pretty general omnivores. They'll spend a lot of time kind of hunting and pecking around for little microorganisms, or eating algae off of plants, or off of the other decor, which is a lot of fun. Uh, they'll eat pretty much anything you throw at them. Dried food, live food, frozen food, and they're very peaceful, they're live-bearing, so if you're in the mood for breeding fish, it's tremendously easy to sex these guys out, get some babies out of them. Uh, like many live bears, by the way, it is best to keep them in water that's typically a little harder than average, north of neutral, preferably. Most live bears don't appreciate acidic conditions. Uh, but they'll get about two inches long on males, a little bit larger, maybe two and a half inches. Three would be a gigantic female. Just a really pretty live bearer, good community fish, good spotlight uh, kind of fish. Just something that you can have uh, in smaller numbers without any issues. Alright, next up, another kind of older hobby favorite, the Black Neon Tetra, Hyphesa Brycon Herbert Axel Rod Eye. It's a fish that has pretty much been present in the hobby, from my understanding, right after its discovery by Jacques Géry in 1961. Uh, it's very widely distributed in Brazil, so much to the point that there's actually a feral population in Brazil that was introduced from the aquarium hobby that shouldn't be there. Uh, they're another very easily uh, maintained fish. They're an omnivore. In nature, they would pick on little kind of micro crustaceans or worms, but also bits of fallen uh, plant matter if it gets in the water, say like fruit, uh, especially during periods of flooding. Uh, it's another very good community fish. A very, very large one would probably be pushing two inches long, with males being a little slimmer than females. Uh, they're very pretty. Uh, I know not everyone goes for the kind of subtle black and gold on these fish, but they're very hardy. And over time, that white that you're seeing a little bit on the fins of these really shines through. It's a very, very pretty fish, even if it's not just out and out with bright reds or blues. Just a good, hardy, easy beginner fish that can also be very rewarding for the expert. Next up, aha, a catfish. This is Corydorus Weitzmanai, uh, sometimes called the Two Saddle Cory, and is something I found out, sometimes called the Dream Cory. Uh, this is a very, very pretty little cory that is naturally found in Peru, typically in the Madre de Dios uh, kind of river system. Like a lot of coreys, they'll be omnivores with a lean of carnivory. They'd eat uh, little micro crustaceans, worms, pretty much anything that they can sift through the sand and find uh, as they plow their faces into it. And as always, I'm going to mention it, make sure to keep your quarries on nice soft sand so they don't shear off their cute little barbels. Uh, not as much to look at typically when they're small, but as they age, they do get some really nice kind of rosy hues, some nice purple to them. The bands come through. You'll see some orange to them. It's a very, very pretty fish. Uh, Apparently the reason they're called the Dream Quarry was they were initially, I think, first collected in the late 40s, then described in the 60s, but the original location given for them was wrong. So for many decades, nobody could find this fish until, uh, I believe, the 2000s. But of course, they're much easier to find now. All right, let's see what we got next. Oh sweet, it's Melanotania maculicae, the redfin dwarf rainbow. Love these guys, it's a very beautiful little dwarf species of rainbow. Uh, these in the wild would be found primarily around northeastern Queensland, although there are uh, more kind of varieties that look a bit different than that within this species umbrella. Uh, unfortunately we don't see these very often in the hobby, say la vie, but they are quite pretty. Uh, 
Like a lot of rainbows, these would have more of a carnivory lean. They'll gladly take to darn near whatever food you throw at them, I would say. I mean, tablets, uh, flake food, frozen food, live food, really, as long as it's near the upper portions of the water, they're probably going to hit it, especially one that's been tank raised for many generations like these. These are a really good community tanks denizen. Uh, like a lot of rainbows, they are very, very adaptable to water conditions. You can keep them in a wide variety of temperatures, wide variety of water hardness, uh, just depending on how you're keeping them, so long as it's stable. Uh, they have been in the hobby for a very long time. I believe they were first introduced to the international hobby in the 1930s, actually. Uh, over time, males will get beautiful hints of white as well as yet more red to the body. I know they're looking good now, but if you can believe it, once they settle in, kind of hit their max of about three inches, they'll look even better. All right, next up, ooh, interesting. This is a very nice species of killifish, Epiplatysinga, sometimes called the red-spotted panchax. Found in a very wide range of Africa. They're found uh, throughout the Congo Basin, in Gabon, in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, so pretty good spread there. Gonna be more of a top-dwelling predator in nature. They would hit a lot of insect larvae or other things that would hit the surface, and in captivity it seems likewise fairly easy to get them to feed on a lot of prepared foods, uh, especially something more meat-based and as long as it's closer to the surface. Like a lot of their close relatives, I wouldn't say that they're particularly aggressive or hard to keep. They may eat very small fish. All right, next up, we'll keep it a little weird. Yaoshania pachychylus, the panda loach. What a cool fish. These guys are gonna be a loach that is naturally found in southern China within, it seems like a fairly small range, but that hasn't been fully explored yet. Uh, these guys, like a lot of other loaches that come from faster flowing areas, are just kind of general omnivores. They would graze on algae, they would eat alfvooks, little, you know, organisms within the algae. Uh, in captivity, it's been pretty easy from what I found to get them to feed. A lot of tablets, sinking wafers seem to be fine, although of course make sure there's plenty of room, plenty of surfaces for them to graze. Uh, again, like a lot of hillstream loaches, I would say make sure to have plenty of dissolved oxygen, preferably cooler temperatures, you know, maybe around 75, maybe a little lower than that, uh, and just a nice established aquarium. And of course, keep in mind that these could jump. You definitely want to make sure that everything is nice and sealed, but they're awfully cute little fellas, uh, especially when very small, although I find the adults kind of with their banded chain pattern very handsome as well. Just a neat, neat little fish that unfortunately you don't see very often. There we go, there's a nice little photo of them, a uh, little sequence of them on an algae wafer. Go figure. Yeah, just a nice fish, very active and preferably kept in groups. Next up, there we go, Polypterus poli, the speckled Bashir, and what a nice fish that is. Uh, beautiful, beautiful, larger kind of oddball predator, very good for a lot of setups. These guys in nature would be found throughout the Congo Basin, uh, in the Labo Pool, uh, in Africa, and they have kind of that classic kind of snaky dinosaur sort of look. Just a really neat fish. Uh, as I mentioned, these are predators. They are carnivores. Uh, ours are about five inches long, so they're still pretty young, which means it's definitely not too hard to train them onto a lot of prepared foods. Uh, here we like to feed them a lot of blood worms, although we've also had success uh, getting them to take some live foods as well as even some sinking pellets and occasionally flake, if you can believe it. So not too bad, especially as long as you're patient and as long as there's nobody fast moving up top to starve them out. Um, they are adaptable to a very wide range of water parameters, but they do get a little larger, about probably 15, 16 inches long uh, in the aquarium, so make sure to have plenty of room even though they're not very active, as well as, I know they're on whiter sand here, but they also look best on dark substrates. All right, yet another catfish, finally feature a pleco, the spotted rubber lip. Uh, sometimes called Ketostoma affinis milesi or L445. 
It's a great looking Pleco from Colombia, uh, especially in like the Rio Meta. Uh, these guys are really good algae eaters I've found. They're gonna be like a lot of other good algae eating Plecos in nature, more of an omnivore. They'll eat kind of whatever they can get. In the aquarium, I would say that's pretty true, uh, although they are most popularly gotten for algae eating purposes. Uh, I've had lots of luck getting these guys going in more established tanks, uh, feeding them plenty of wafers, fresh cucumber, but also making sure to throw in, you know, the occasional shrimp pellet or a bit of frozen food to keep everything varied. Uh, kind of like the panda loaches we talked about earlier, these are more of a faster flowing riverine species, so make sure the tank's not too hot. Probably wouldn't keep these guys above 76 degrees myself long term. Uh, with plenty of oxygen, so you know a nice air stone or an overpowered filter or power head um, They can take a lot of flow. You just don't necessarily need to go crazy with it to take good care of these guys uh, Just a really neat pleco All right time for what is possibly my favorite fish in this whole entire unboxing and yes It really is the flying fox, Epozeorhynchus coleopterum, found in Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia. It's got a fairly widespread in nature. This is gonna be kind of a close relative to some of your more common red tail or rainbow sharks. Uh, kind of a very similar looking fish to the Siamese algae eater, even though it's not, although I found it to be a pretty decent algae scraper in some cases. They're found naturally in more flowing rivers, lots of cobbles with a lot of kind of underslung uh, pieces of wood or rocks for them to feed off of. In aquariums, they're generalized omnivores. They'll eat darn near whatever you throw at them. They're a little feisty as they approach their full length of about five and a half, six inches, but I still don't think that they're particularly all that bad in an aquarium. If you want to hedge your bets, just make sure to keep them with something else kind of equally large, you know, sturdy like these rainbows, like these loaches we're seeing, larger barbs, just nothing too tiny. I don't think they're that bad. I do like these just so much because I think they're pretty decent algae eaters, but most of all, they're just a really pretty fish. As they age, that stripe gets so much more pretty orange gold to it. You have some nice white, you have nice black. It's just a very, very handsome fish that I think gets overlooked a little bit because it's been in the hobby for a long time. It gets a little big, it's a little aggressive, but I think it's just a really cool fish. All right, last but not least, the tiny, spiny eel, Macronathus taniagaster. Truthfully, we've never had this eel in, and it's a very poorly understood species. We're basing some of our care and some of how we approach them here in the store off of their close relative, Macronathus circumcinctus, the half-banded spiny eel. These guys, the taniagaster, are kind of denoted by those ocella, those nice ice spots uh, on that last top fin uh, near the tail. Uh, and like a lot of their close relatives, they shouldn't get much more than a foot long, if that. Uh, they are carnivores. We're feeding them lots of frozen food here in the store, like brine shrimp and blood worms. Uh, and just make sure, of course, to seal up your tank and not keep fish so small they can be eaten with them. Care seems to be fairly straightforward. They do come from Thailand in the Mekong, Mekong and Chow Freya basins. Uh, but hopefully, as we get to study these more, we'll unlock more of their secrets. Feel free to check us out at wetspottropicalfish.com or follow us on Facebook and Instagram to get links to our most updated stock list uh, that have all our fish available for purchase.